It's to midday. Good morning. If you're just joining us, it's Rory with you until uh, midday, taking you through going back in time, music and memories all the way until then. And we are live on Facebook and across all of our social media channels this morning. So good morning if you're watching online and joining me uh, via Zoom because uh, the DeLorean didn't quite make it down to see him this morning, uh, down to pick him up in time. Colleen McFadgen is here to talk us through all the upcoming releases uh, over the next month or so and what's in the cinemas right now. Carly, good morning. Good morning, Rory. It's brilliant to be here. I'm, I'm delighted. Loads of movies this month. You know, after the last couple of years where, let's face it, there was a wee bit of a gap and they were just kind of doling out movies every now and then to us. We're in full-on blockbuster season. We've got loads to talk about. And I think something that will suit everyone, including... You know, we're obviously going to talk big blockbusters. We're going to talk the big box office movies. But we might mention a few, if we have time, if I don't go on too much, if we have time to mention a few that people maybe won't know as well. Okay, yeah, and as you said, like, I mean, we've we've movies now coming up. I mean, summer block, but this is the first summer blockbuster season in, what, two years, give or take? Yeah, three years. And actually, I suppose, will we start with the number one movie in the world right now? which is Top Gun. And that's a perfect example of what we've gone through in the last couple of years and that this movie was ready in 2019. They finished filming it in 2019 and they were ready to go. I think it was May 2020 and they held on. And then, of course, you know, there's the pandemic and the cinemas were closed. And but even last summer, Tom Cruise was saying, absolutely, no way am I doing this until, no way am I doing this until all the cinemas are open everywhere. And... You know, that us in the cinema business were kind of going, well, that seems like quite a good sign, actually, doesn't it? Mm, you know, yeah. that if they're holding that. So then, lo and behold, I went to watch the movie, and I know lots of people will have seen it already, but I must admit, so I'm off the, we were talking a little bit off air, and you were kind of saying your, your movies. I realized, oh no, I'm a couple of years older than him, but I am very <laughs> much of the Top Gun generation. However, all my pals love Top Gun. I was more of an Arnie guy, was the big fan. So I went in to see this and I was kind of going, ah, you know, it'll be fun. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a bleeding heart lefty and all that sort of stuff. It's all American military. Oh, I don't uh -huh. know. After about four minutes, Rory, I was going, okay, okay, you've got me. I'm in. By the end of the movie, I am USA, USA. <laughs> this is the most fun I've had in the cinema in years. And it's not and I can't stress this enough, my normal cup of tea. Right, it okay. Brilliant. Like, you can know, you notice the difference in the sort of physicality of watching this. I know that sounds like waffly nonsense, but what it is is they strapped the jets or the, the cameras to the jets when they were filming this. Then they took the, the actors up in two-seater airplanes. Mm -hmm. And so you can't see the actual pilot. They are acting. They operate the cameras themselves, the actors, and they are acting while flying. And you can tell the difference. I don't know how, but you can. It's such a tremendous amount of fun. And look, I am, of course, biased. I love the cinema. But there is no way. I know lots of people have all sorts of dodgy devices to watch it. I don't care how big your telly is. I don't care how fancy your phone is. There is no way this experience... Save that for Fast and Furious. There is no way this experience is... is can be done anywhere except the cinema to enjoy it properly. And we know we know it's it's big, it's bold, it's brash, it's full of action. How does it work on a on a story level? Well, well, it's it's almost like we rehearsed this, which we actually haven't. Because I wanted to say that all of that stuff is great fun, and that would work for the first half hour mm. if there wasn't an actual story here. And Tom Cruise says the reason he took thirty five years to make it is. You know, it was a huge hit first time around. He was being sent scripts for Top Gun 2 all the time. And he just said no. Now, it probably helps that he didn't need the money, you know? And he didn't need a hit. <laughs> but he was saying, story's no good. Story's no good. And then they came along. The fact that Miles Teller is the image. He looks exactly like you would imagine what Meg Ryan and Anthony uh, uh, Andrews, uh, uh, Edwards even, uh, son would be like. Yeah. It's uncanny, especially with the little tash. It's uncanny that he looks like him. The story works that Maverick... You know, he's still the most talented uh, fighter. There's a reason he's still in the military, even though he never obeys the rules. That's explained in the story. And that he's sent back as a teacher because it's such a nonsense mission. Only he could do it. 
And by the end, look, it probably is true. The last 15 minutes, maybe the, the brilliant storytelling mm -hmm. does get a tiny bit silly, but it doesn't matter anymore because you're so in. You love all these characters just as much as you love the old ones. Or, and more importantly, if you've never heard of the old ones. So I was working with the group. They were, you know, 13. They didn't even know who Tom Cruise was. Imagine if I felt old ah, when I was talking when I was talking to you earlier. You imagine how that made me feel. Yeah. I was talking to a chap in the tourist office yesterday, who I'm sure is a very healthy 23, but to me he looked 12. And oh. he said, never, se <laughs> never seen Top Gun. Absolutely adored it. So all the people oh, of my generation right. who love who love Top Gun loved it, and all the people who've never heard of Top Gun loved it. Now, if you get those two. You must be doing something right. So, hmm. good story, good act. It probably helps with the action movies. They're proper actors too. You know, they are good actors, even if you're being slightly ridiculous as a, you know, macho, macho uh, uh, pilot. And they've updated it a little bit because hmm. the same amount of time has passed in real life as in the movie life. They're not pretending it was so the day done, after. Yeah, it's Top done Gun. in real yeah, time, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's done in real time. And it really works. I will... If you ever have me on again, I will guarantee you, I get people to write in and so on. Everyone's going to say they've had a tremendous experience at the cinema. There are people going to this that I don't think have gone to the cinema, certainly since before lockdown, yeah. who are coming out. A few of them came to see Bond, but this is having even more bigger expense. Obviously, people feel a bit yeah. safer now there as well. There certainly seems to be a bigger buzz around this one. And is it because that you know most of the restrictions are gone now, so people can actually go to the cinema you know, and the cinema's full of people and the atmosphere yeah. is there and, you know, everything a moviegoer loves about going to the, the movie theatre is That's back. it. That's it. But the joy and downside of my job is I get to watch the movies usually a couple of days early. I get to walk into the cinema, open it up and watch it myself. And that's brilliant. But there's something communal in watching it, particularly if it's a funny or exciting movie. Yeah. Do you know that bit where people go... <gasps> When something happens, yeah, there's, there's, a nothing, there's a collective yeah, gasp or a yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing like it. It's like uh, I remember many, many years ago watching The Sixth Sense for the second time and turning around and watching the rest of the audience when the reveal happens. There's nothing like that. Yeah. And so, because there's genuinely jaw-dropping moments, and I'm not, and I mean literally, and I know how to use the word literally properly. <laughs> actual jaw-dropping moments in this to watch it with a big packed cinema is just wonderful with that sound because everyone as the jet flies over and everyone flinches you know the whole yeah. it's like a mexican wave of emotion a mexican wave of joy and fun all the stuff we missed out over lockdown right there wrapped up in one movie it's i kind of liked it could you guess yeah i sorry i'm sort of yeah, yeah. picking that up yeah i'm picking up that vibe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right so that's top gun so that's in theaters now and probably will be for for quite some time uh it's doing big business what have we got coming up over the next month we're heading in now to blockbuster season proper right there's a couple of big releases uh coming our way over the next month or two what what have we got coming up yeah you could pretty tick off every friday for the next three weeks really big movies so next week talking about classic franchises we've got jurassic world dominion that's because we don't use numbers in hollywood anymore yeah you know because the people know like two <laughs> or three it's top gun maverick it's jurassic world dominion and uh, this one I'm really excited about too, not just because, you know, dinosaurs are fun. You know, they always are. But So I love Jurassic Park way back in the day. It's a brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. And I think the sequels were never quite as good. And then Jurassic World came with a new cast and the action scenes in it were always excellent. But again, you asked earlier about story. I think maybe the story in the first two Jurassic World movies were okay yeah it was okay it was good fun but you go nothing gripped you like like the other one and they seem to have come full circle now they're saying this is the last one and they want to yeah. nail the landing so they've brought back the original cast with the new cast so we've sam neil with jeff goldblum and laura dern as well as chris uh, chris pratt and bryce dallas howard the monsters are bigger and mm. better than ever and they really kind of changed it from the, the monsters or the dinosaurs are the bad guys to maybe, mm. you know, we're kind of the bad guys for, for, for creating this mess. And I think what we always wanted to see of the dinosaurs actually running rampage in throughout the world is there. The clips, I, I, I was watching the trailer just before we came on and it really is 
spectacular looking. You know, yeah. uh, it reminds me of when the original movie came out, uh, the great Gloria Hunterford was interviewed at the premiere and she said, it was so good, you couldn't tell the difference between the computer dinosaurs and the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Now, I know God love her, she, that's 30 years ago and I'm still quoting it, but I know exactly what she means yeah. though. You're watching it though, go, that has to be some rubber effect yeah. or because you know when computer stuff first came out it seems very light you know it's kind of fake you know yeah, they're talking exactly. they're yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas watching the clips you go wow that looks real what what was there because it looks so impressive and you know we've just come on in technology so much i'm really looking forward to this one now anyone with kids will have noticed we haven't had kids movies for quite some time uh -huh. so jurassic world will help with that but also, here's good news for everyone who is kids under 10 years old, right? Um, there's finally a cartoon out. We haven't had one since Sonic and the Bad Guys. Now, you've a little person yourself, Rory, haven't you? I do. And, you know, you probably notice, and then all the birthday parties going, what's new? Nothing. And I think that is because of the pandemic. Animated movies take way longer to make. Uh-huh. They take way longer to make. And, you know, we've had drip drip of big blockbusters since cinemas reopened. And I think they just caught up on them. But finally, we've got one, and it's a big one. So we've got Lightyear. Now, obviously, this is something to do with the Toy Story world. This is a spinoff from, from, from the Toy Story universe. Yes. And okay. again, I, I have to say, I was... You know, it sounds like I'm a very cynical man. I'm usually a very optimistic man. But again, <laughs> I was kind of... Because I'm a bit of the, ah, do a new story. You know, do a new story. We don't need an old story. And then I thought this was very clever. Because, of course, in Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear is a toy based on a famous uh, kids cartoon. Yeah. So this is the kids cartoon that it's based on. And they've got Chris Evans, who people know as Captain America, to voice it. And I, I, again, I was going, ah, okay, it might be good. Saw the robot cat in the trailer, went, oh, I am sold. I am nearly 50 years old, Rory. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't be excited by a robot cat in a spaceship. But I went, that's laugh out loud funny. That's very good. So this has ignited. This has ignited your inner child, really, Collie. Is what you're saying? I think or did it need igniting? So <laughs> even though you'll you'll hear from my accent, yes, I'm a, I, I'm from Dublin originally, but all my people are from a sort of Anagrid Calhame, the Ross's direction, and uh, they will say his inner child never went away. I see. He, he, he was always an idiot. So um, yeah, absolutely. But it's uh, reinvigorated. Uh, uh, the wish to go and see something else because nothing makes me happier than when there's a contrast of movies. Yeah. There's something for everyone. That's I think what that's we need. The most Absolutely. Fun. That's what the cinema is about. We won't all like the same thing. Would not be awful if we all only went to see. I love Marvel movies, but imagine if there was only our Marvel movies. How boring would that be? Yeah. So when there's a choice for everyone, I love that. Well, let's have a listen to uh, a snippet from uh, the upcoming movie Lightyear. Let's have a listen to this. After a full year of being marooned, our first hyperspeed test flight is a go. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. You were narrating again. I was not. Just doing the mission log. You do know no one ever listens to this. I know that. Narrating helps me focus. Ready, Captain Lightyear? Ready as I'll ever be, Commander Hawthorne. This is exciting. A new adventure. I'm gonna grant you four minutes to be off planet, but then you come right back to us. To infinity. And beyond. Narrating helps me focus. That's a clip from, from Lightyear that's uh, coming your way. Uh, oh, what, what's the release date on Lightyear, Collie? So that's the 17th. Parents, hold on. Only a couple more weeks to go. It's open the 17th, and it's going to be, uh, look, it's going to be huge. And uh, the, the, the other Star Trek fan in me already laughed at that bit. So it, it's <laughs> Pixar. We didn't mention that, that it is Pixar who always do the best. Yeah. You know, and it's not even jokes for mum and dads and jokes for the kids. It's more jokes that everyone can enjoy. That's, well, that's why, why they're I, brilliant. That's what I always liked about Pixar and about Toy Story because there were there were the jokes that worked for the kids and they were very yeah. on the nose, but there were also there was also the humor there for moms and dads that went whoosh, straight over the yeah. kids' heads. Yeah. But mom yeah. and dad, so there's something in there for everybody, which is what's what 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 we like, what they need. Uh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. There are many... Uh, look, I'm sure you've done it. You've gone to the cinema. I'm very happy to have that experience. But you go, oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to chew the inside <laughs> of my face if I have to listen to... It could be anyone. Those fascist pups, just using that in general. Uh, again, you know, but it's great. Yeah, it's great first-time experience for, you know, some 
some uh, little people, but some of them are awful. So when it comes along, something that you go, I enjoyed it almost as much as they did, is something magic, you know? And like, we're now at the age, because Toy Story is a long time ago, the people who love Toy Story when they're five and didn't get any of the grown up stuff are now b- w- get watching it with their kids and getting all sad at the adult bits going, oh my God, they've grown <laughs> up too know. fast. And now understanding why there seemed to be dust in in dad's eye when he brought me to see it 25 yeah. years it's ago. It's my allergies. So- it's my allergies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, that's light here. So that, that's on the way over the next couple of weeks. Right, Collie, we're going to go for a quick commercial break and we're going to talk about uh, an Elvis biopic that's coming up over the next few weeks as well. Is that right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so we'll stay tuned and we'll be back right after this short commercial break. It is a nine minutes to a midday. Good morning to you if you're just joining us on the Saturday Morning Rewind Worry on the radio with you until 12 midday. And we're live across our social media platforms as well. Good morning if you're joining us on Facebook or any of our social media platforms this morning. Colleen McFadgen is here with me. We are talking movies and what's coming up in theatres as we head into summer blockbuster season. Now, a big one, Colleen on the way is the Baz Luhrmann directed Elvis biopic. Let's listen to a clip. There are some who'd make me out to be the villain of this here story. Let's don't let a good thing die. Are you born with destiny? Or does it just come knocking at your door? There's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hayride welcome. Mr. Elvis Presley. Get a haircut, buttercup. In that moment, I watched that skinny boy transform into a superhero. looking forward to this one not least because the the voice you heard there with the strange accent that's tom hanks who's playing colonel tom parker and you know we've heard a lot of elvis stuff and obviously we've had elvis movies and stuff before but this i think is the first one really looking at the very odd relationship elvis had with colonel tom parker who of course wasn't a colonel and was somewhat of a con man it was one of the reasons that elvis never made it to, to europe except when he was a gi but also, Elvis was fiercely loyal to him. And look, we can talk about... Uh, it stars Austin Butler, by the way, who I didn't know is a, was a big Disney teen star. So like like people like Zac Efron, you know he's going to be able to do the singing and he's going to be able to do the dancing. Because if you grow up in that atmosphere, you can always do it. But look, the best review we can ever have, this comes out here in uh, June 24th. But two people who've already seen it, Priscilla Presley... And Lisa Marie Presley have both seen it and said this is by far the nearest any movie, any bo- any miniseries has ever got to the real Elvis. Now, right, okay, so it's it got is, the seal it, of approval from his family, uh, which is always a good start. Uh, absolutely, and and they, you know, sometimes that happens, and you go, oh yeah, I bet you they are like executive producers and so on in it. That's not the case, and it is still very Baz Luhrmann style. You know, people are known from Moulin Rouge or um, Romeo and Juliet. So there is a bit of flight of fantasy. You know, it's not just a straight Elvis was born in 1935, he died in this age. There is going to be a bit of um, uh, uh, color and and decoration, probably a bit yeah. of inve- you know invention to get the story across. But okay. it's got rave reviews. It looks fantastic. I can't wait. Again, not a huge Elvis fan, but I'm really looking forward to this. Is it a war? Is it a? Is it a? It's, it's obviously not done through rose tinted glasses. This is going to be a yep. warts and all. Um, true this story is a biopic. Of, yeah, a, a, absolutely. And what they do is, it's very much a modern trend with biopics. Is that they take a slice of his life. They will tell other parts of the story, but it's one section of his life in particular mm. that they concentrate on in a way to tell the whole life because I think people have got bored with that sort of here's him as a, a child here's him as a teenager and so on that sort of linear way so it's, yeah. it's a different way of doing but it's definitely going to say show the downsides of both him and Colonel Tom Parker and apparently with Tom Hanks Tom Hanks said he's a little worried because his accent is so weird and it's almost bad acting because that's the way Colonel Tom Parker talked he had an odd accent he had a very weird manner and sometimes you know you can almost act too well he could do too good an yeah. impression of somebody and people go 
I know, I don't believe that all. But like we know in real life, not not your good listeners, of course, Rory, but some people are odd. You know, and sometimes <laughs> when you portray betray them on screen, people go, I don't believe that. They go, yeah. No, we'd cut out the weird bits. This is the this is the toned down version. Well look, um, if you so- got away with Forrest Gump and that accent, you get I know yeah. Forrest Gump wasn't a real person that wasn't a biopic, but if you got away with that accent and managed to pull it off, he'll get away with this. It's Tom Hanks. He can get away with most things, exactly. let's be honest. Yeah. So that's the Elvis biopic from Baz Luhrmann. That is coming 24th of June. That's the 24th of June. Okay, so, we look yeah. forward to that. So we've got Jurassic World on the 10th, we've got Lightyear on the 17th, and we've got Elvis on the 24th. Now that really is something for a lot of people. That really is, and that's jam-packed. And there'll be loads of other uh, things being dripped in as well, and we'll talk about that. You're going to join me again next month. Uh, for July and we'll talk about uh, the big releases and how they're doing uh, at the box office but we'll also talk about the other stuff that's coming in around them as well Great, it'll be all about Minions as old parents (laughs) know Minions, 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 Minions Lovely, really looking forward to that (laughs) (laughs) Collie, listen, thanks for joining me this morning All right, you take care A pleasure, thank you very much